Hey everybody, Rodman here, and thanks for tuning in to Star Sector. So, uh, we left off, I was searching for habitable worlds. So the first thing I actually want to do doesn't include habitable worlds. I want to lower my fleet cost. So one of the ways to do this is, I will explain as I move towards it, is to park your ships. So, um, the way the, I guess I have to get even deeper here. The way the map is generated for Star Sector, the core worlds here, and let me zoom out and turn on constellations, here are the core worlds. The core worlds are static, they remain the same no matter what game you play. Uh, these are not randomly generated worlds, these are pre-generated worlds. Um, and there are three places, without doing the tutorial, that you can park your stuff for free. Corvus, uh, Mayasura, and Yama. Um, so in, I'm headed to Corvus right now, um, in Yama here, you can park it in Chupi Okra, or Orko, uh, which is an abandoned siphon station, uh, in Mayasura, you can park it at Mariath, which is an abandoned Astropolis, and in Corvus, you can park it at Asharu, which is an abandoned terraforming platform. So Asharu is, uh, sort of near this jump point here. And this way, uh, you can just go ahead and park your ships, and you won't have to pay a fine or a fee. Uh, normally in the game, for you to be able to park um, money free, you'd have to either own the station or pay an upkeep fee. But here I don't. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to park Tragic Hysteria. I'm also going to park my smuggler mule, I'm going to park the condor, I'm going to park the kite. Um, my crew is over capacity, so I'm going to put some crew in storage here. Oops, wrong way. And then I'm also going to put all the wonderful weapons and stuff that I have away as well. Um, there is no cost, no tariffs, uh, and as far as I know, there's no chance for these things to be stolen or lost. Um, it's free storage, completely free storage, and you should definitely use it. All right, so this episode, my focus is going to be on more surveying, uh, plus whatever sort of shenanigans I get into. Uh, so I'm going to resupply my ships for such a mission. Now, I did mention Persephone before, so let me uh, explain more broadly in a moment. Uh, if you check the core worlds here, all of the um, clusters, all of the sort of um, uh, nebulas or whatever you want to call them, constellations, outside of the core worlds are pseudo-random, but the ones in the core worlds are random, or, or uh, preset. And Persephone is one of the worlds in the core that is preset and also colonizable. It doesn't necessarily mean it is awesome to colonize. It just means that there's a possibility. There's also uh, Duzak, um, and then Tia and Taxit. Uh, these are all worlds that have not been uh, colonized by, you know, the factions that start. So here we've got, uh, this is Duzak. Duzak I've never found to be decent for colonization, but you can still poke around it. Um, most of the things in the core worlds are pretty well claimed and all that. I do also have to be careful because currently my fleet is a lot smaller. Um, so I have to be cautious. I'm not, uh, I'm not wielding a battleship or anything like that. Alright, so these worlds, that doesn't even have uh, ruins on it, so I'm just going to leave. So the reason I mentioned Persephone, uh, there's a possibility that the RNG galaxies that you generate uh, really don't have good systems to colonize. So what the developers did was they left Perse Penelope, sorry, I've been calling it the wrong thing, Penelope Star, uh, in order to make sure that even if RNG uh, really screws you over, there's at least Penelope Star that you can colonize um, and Penelope Star is a system that sometimes has really good colonies, sometimes it doesn't. It's still a little random, um, but it will have something for you. So, it, you know, you can never be completely uh, screwed. 
Uh, one other thing I need to do is turn on exploration mode. This will help me to find the worlds that I've yet to explore. So Penelope Star has a bunch of worlds. Uh, if you want to go into becoming a colony magnate, uh, Penelope Star is a good one to colonize because you could. there's a possibility of a lot of different systems here. Um, and these, Ithaca here has widespread ruins, but poor farmland. Uh, but let's go explore the ruins. We got a flat cannon that I'm going to save. And... I'm going to remember to do some sensor bursting here and there to try to find everything. And then, uh... Uh, Thrinakia, or whatever this is called, also has, um, ruins. And it has an ECM package as well. Cool. And that's pretty much all that we're going to find here. Uh, there are some additional worlds here. The derelict spore ship station isn't really anything. It's just flavor. Um, we can check Ismara, but, uh, you know, this system is not as good as the desert systems I found before. Uh, just to make it clear, ideally what you're doing, uh, each world that you colonize can only have a certain maximum number. Yeah, there's nothing there. Maximum number of industries. Um, so in order to fuel a really good empire, you need a breadbasket, you need uh, a mining world, and then you need like a world that constructs ships. Uh, each additional world after that, you know, you can have extra benefit. But essentially, that means that you're not going to be able to get one world that does it all. Uh, what you're really going to want to do is to find multiple worlds um, that, you know, that you can uh, set up industries on that have low hazard ratings. H hazard ratings, I've explained this before, but I'll say it again. Hazard ratings are basically how expensive it is to run a colony. So the more hazardous the, the world, um, the more expensive it would be. For instance, Earth would have a very low hazard rating, but there are very, very, very few um, Earth-like systems in this galaxy. And the Luddites tend to have most of them. Um, Mars would be a little bit more expensive than Earth, but still not crazy expensive. Oh, we got a desert world here. And then uh, something like Mercury would be very expensive because of how hot it is. So the hazard rating of this world is only 125. That's pretty low. Uh, but there's not farmland here. So we would probably not consider this for colonization. What you're really going to want is somewhere that has... I mean, I guess you can make do with poor farmland, but ideally you're looking for abundant farmland. Um, I'm just going to run some sensor burstings, because sometimes there's going to be um, research station, mining stations, uh, drone probes, you know, they, 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 there can be other reasons to sort of investigate a system, other than just colonizing. And actually, it's probably the fastest way to make money in this game that doesn't require a whole lot of... Um, you know, you can you can survey and loot with just like one um, one f freighter ship to store all the goods. All right, so here's a mud skipper. Uh, oh, it's recoverable, so I'm gonna recover it. Mud skippers are a uh, little, you know, civilian transports. And that allows me to have more crew. I actually brought all the crew along with me. Okay, so this world here has a, a ruins. I'm Right now I'm in the Corona, which is not great. I'm damaging my own ships. Widespread ruins. Let's explore the ruins. Uh, there's an administrator in the ruins. And a Gamma Core. Uh, so the administrator that I got... Uh, how do I get to the administrator? I kind of forget without planets. Uh, they're not someone I'm likely to want to keep around. I think they're in command. Um, I know how to get to the administrator screen when I um, when I have colonies, but not when I don't have colonies. Uh, administrators run the planets for you, and they have... Essentially, the administrators have some of these industry skills, um, and they can be useful in order to run your colonies 
well. All right, so there's some um, that pinged cyan. So there's some uh, some remnant fleet down there. Where is where do I get my administrator? I thought it was in command. I'm not used to having to fire admins. Um, let's hope that they don't cost an arm and a leg per month. It's not that big of a deal. And as you can see here, uh, the systems with an empty box I've never been to, and the ones with some question marks is like partially surveyed, and then the ones over here that have an X is fully surveyed. Uh, so when you're doing exploration mode, so like for instance this uh, has a warning beacon here, meaning that there's a lot of enemies waiting for me in Uruk, um, and there's no planet, there's like two planets in Uruk, I'm just going to skip over it. Um, a medium danger is, is honestly way too dangerous for the teeny fleet I have right now, because I put away a lot of my ships. Alright, so my monthly income, there it is, uh, Terry Dalmar is costing me 500 credits. Uh, they have industrial planning 3. Um, let's see, command. There we are. How do I fire you? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to fire them from this screen. Oh, 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 it was right there. Uh, back in command, colonies, and yeah, here we are. Uh, so Terry, I'm going to dismiss you because I don't yet have need for an administrator. But hopefully soon. Uh, I'm surveying all these areas because I'm looking for potential colonies. All right, there's some remnant fleets here in one little barren world. I'm not going to stick around. Uh, so one thing I want to do is I want to survey all of the neighboring constellations that are near the core worlds. The closer to the core worlds, the easier it will be to literally administrate it. Uh, when you set up a colony, you're going to be raided by pirates often. And, ooh, warning beacon high. Yikes, not going there. Um, and if you don't defend your own colonies from pirates, you end up suffering uh, a lot of penalties. And the light, ooh, that's a high beacon as well. That's a big old no. Which is too bad, that potentially could be a good um, colonizing because there's four planets there. What I will try to do is check out the fringe point here. Oh, there's an old sensor array. So there's a bunch of remnants here. There's Ooh, this is could be a very fruitful area because there's two desert worlds, an arid world, and a barren desert world. Um, I'm going to see if I can't go dark and evade uh, the remnants to do some surveying here. I can always transverse jump out if I need to. And um, there's ruins on this one. I just gotta be very careful because there's a lot of enemies here. And I can always emergency burn. All right, so there's vast ruins here, but there's not a lot of other things here. Uh, so two gamma cores, that's pretty cool. Um, I. Very good missile launcher, a swarm launcher, um, hardened shields. Come on. It's not letting me learn that. Um, Sabo and antimatter blaster. There we go. Sometimes it lets you learn it, sometimes it doesn't. There's also debris fields. I think these might be, yep, these are two different debris fields. So I'm gonna take from both 
and I'm going to attempt to uh, make my way over to the um, it has a comm relay which is even better I'm gonna try to make my way over to the other planets to see if they're camped this uh, right here could be a very fruitful system because it has um, comm relay which adds stability it has a nav buoy which is very good it's got uh, multiple planets that could be helpful it's just full of enemies so I'd have to clear it first There's another debris field. I don't dare use my uh, sensor burst because that would definitely give away my position. And they'd almost certainly give chase. What I can try to do is um, either break down or hack the nav buoy to slow down the enemy ships. Um, oh, it's not claimed by any faction, so I'm going to claim it. And now, even going dark, I'm a little bit faster. All right, so there's uh, an arid world over here that also has uh, ruins here. What I really need is uh, farmland. If this place doesn't have any farmland, it's not worth it to me. So there's poor farmland here. It leaves it as a possibility for me to start a colony here. Um, so we got a pirate blueprint package. I already know that. We have the plasma cannon blueprints, which is very cool. Uh, someone's been using this to stash drugs because there was a ton of, of uh, recreational drugs. I'm going to learn the uh, plasma. Alright, so let's check out the desert world. Additional poor farmland. Yeah, I mean, this, I think, I'd have to really figure out. Um, oh, I gained some harvested organs from the pods. A, uh, ooh, wow. So this core here uh, increases the amount of fuel that you can um, make, much like the Nano Forge. Uh, we got a high intensity laser, another cyclone repeater, and I'm a little over my cargo capacity, so I'm gonna ditch some organics and some metals, because those are the least expensive stuff I have. Uh, and then there is a, oof, remnant nexus. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to I'm probably not going to be able to uh, survey the last one. I also leveled up. Um, so let's go with... Probably... Maximum combat readiness. Get my own... Oh. Man. They are... Definitely patrolling. So, the moment I, ent I get close to here, they're going to know I'm here. So I'm going to do it and then get ready to run. Trace organics and rich ore. Right, I'm just gonna burn my way out. So I would say this is a pretty decent area to be in. I'm gonna transverse jump. Sorry boys, goodbye. But uh, maybe not the best because the farmland was a little poor. But it is it was still pretty amazing. And I found some amazing things in those ruins. If you want a populous um, system, if you want a populous empire, uh, decent farmland is very, very important. All right, so there's also a, a Megaron here. There's a uh, widespread ruins. This gave a low-tech blueprint package that I already knew. Some pylum launchers. Oh boy, a ton of heavy machinery. Um, so this heavy machinery is 150 a piece. This metals is 30 a piece. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to happily be oversupplied or over uh, encumbered, full of stuff. It makes me spend a lot more extra. Um, a lot, a lot of extra supplies per day, and I'm gonna run back home to sell it. Oh. I'm already uh, losing a lot of supplies, 
so hitting some storms is not that big of a deal. Alright, I want to go to the independent world, which is here. There's a bunch of Luddites here as well that I'm going to want to avoid because I'm not necessarily on the friendliest of terms with them. Um, and they're going to be patrolling and being annoying to me. Alright, let's prepare my ships. And on the black market, I'm going to go ahead and sell... Um, I'm not going to sell the blueprints because I don't want the pirates to learn anything like that. But I'm going to sell a whole lot of my heavy machinery. Uh, let's refuel, resupply. Also, I have a little bit more crew capacity, so I'm going to raise that up. Uh, I do have to pay a lot for the crew, but it's if I find ships to salvage. I'm going to sell the blueprints to the independent military. Um, that way I'm not... They are pirate blueprints, but I'm not giving them to the pirates. If you sell blueprints on the black market or to pirates, um, they use them. And that could be a real problem. And then because I'm lazy and wealthy, on the open market I'm going to buy some regular supplies. But that also makes it so that the... Um, uh, that the independents that I'm trying to befriend uh, won't be pissed because I've uh, traded a lot of wealth on the black market. Oh god. Go away. Let it fleet. Okay, so I'm still surveying over here. I'm going to try to do it as fast as I'm able. Uh, I didn't put away this stuff yet. But I will. Alright, so I, I got it reduced by one for the black market trades, but it would have been a lot worse had I not purchased some of those supplies on the normal market. Probably been reduced by like three or something. Alright, going to hit a storm. Uh, this place I've already been to... Oh no, I was overshooting it. Or undershooting it. Here we go. This is where I wanted to go. They just have one planet here. I'm going to check it out anyway, because, you know, it's potentially ruined. Ruins. Maybe not ruins, but they have some ships around it. Oh, a little kite. That doesn't much matter to me. All right, let's continue our quest. Uh, black hole's probably not a very good system to colonize. And there's no planets here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll check it out. Oh, they have a Sunder. And a Gemini. I don't want either of them, so I'm going to break them down. More flat cannons, more pylum. Uh, they have a cruiser here. A venture cruiser. Wasn't able to salvage that either. Uh, stable location. All right, let's do a sensor burst. I see the little remnant fleets here. Uh, he's following me, and if he finds enough allies, they might build up the nerve to attack me, but probably not. Old Mud Skipper. I think it stands to reason, uh, but I'll say it anyway. Do not fly into a black hole. Don't do it. If you're curious what it will do to you, I mean, come on. What do you think it? What do you think happens? <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, black holes are kind of fine actually for um, colonies. But this neutron star system, it will not be fine. I hate neutron stars. But they're st still sometimes worth... Oh, no, come on. So I'm stuck in the pulsar beam here. And what that's doing is rapidly destroying my own ships. My combat readiness is tanking as a result from being bombarded by the, uh, the, the neutron pulse. 
and that makes it expensive to recover. But there is a research station and equipment caches here. So the knowledge of making a modified pirate tanker and integrated, ooh, integrated targeted unit. That's a very good one. Slide those and let's get to this research station. Uh, efficiency overhaul, which is awesome for non-combat ships. Converted hangar, which is pretty cool. Auto pulse lasers, heavy needler. Yeah, I mean, it's worth it to poke around, and that's why I'm here, because a lot of the systems that are just really, they suck to, um, they suck to, uh, inhabit can have really nice stuff. And apparently there's something else over there, but I have to wait for this, uh, pulsar wave to pass over. I discovered a minor weapons cache, which is here-ish. Oh, it's right there. Okay. I'm just waiting so I don't get blasted. Uh, Tachyon Lance, I already know that. And some... All right, there's, uh, there's no more reason, I don't think, for me to stay here. Can I get to the jump point before the pulsar beam? Yeah, I can. Okay, uh, so let's keep going to Rathon Nebula. And once I have most of the local around the core world's constellations mapped out, I can make my choice. Um, the reason I'm being so careful is it's permanent. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be, but essentially when you colonize, the intention is that you set up shop there forever. Uh, so it's it's important to find the best possible worlds uh, because you're in most playthroughs you're not going to end up colonizing like dozens of worlds you only colonize a small handful that's sort of the way the game works uh, so I'm certainly this is not a colonizable world but since I'm already here I'm going to poke around and uh, see if there's like mining stations research stations stuff like that now my Glashen uh, stipend is running up in nine months. Initially, when you first colonize, uh, your colonies themselves will cost you a lot of money per month while they set up and grow. But then eventually, you can make a lot of money running colonies. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing here. I'm just going to uh, transverse jump. Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Transverse jump uh, lowers your combat readiness a little bit, so it's a little co costlier than just um, than just running to an exit point, but sometimes it's more convenient. So there's a medium warning beacon here, and there's not enough worlds here. I'm gonna start skipping over the things that have no worlds. All right, so there's no medium beacon. There's a medium beacon here, but there's no one guarding this entrance. Uh, we've got. I don't think this is colony worthy. Barren Desert is kind of the best world we've got out here. There's a lot of worlds though. A lot of planets. But not particularly good ones. Oh, and they have a remnant nexus here. So they already they know I'm here. So it's time to move. Uh, ship recovery, so there's a combat freighter here that's not too destroyed. I have to be careful not to recover things that, um, a supply cache with a mud skipper. Not recover ships that I'll have to mothball because I can't transverse jump at that point. All right, let's uh, rename these mud skippers. I guess there's no copy paste. Cerberus, and I'm going to be selling these ships. That's why I'm not outfitting them, giving them any ordnance, anything like that. I'm surprised their fleets haven't come to harass me because um, 
I definitely... Orbital Habitat? I definitely made it clear that I was here. Uh, another Gamma Core. And some food. Oh, I could salvage the remnants of the station. Maybe I shouldn't fly in the Corona. I lost a crew doing this. I don't want to be over capacity because then I lose supplies quickly. Uh, let's get out to... Nope. No ruins there. I'm sort of just looking for ruins as well. So I don't know where their fleets are. They hypothetically have fleets around here. Oh, another orbital habitat I happened upon. Oh, geez. So the metals are 30 a piece. The domestic goods are 50 a piece. So I'm going to take the domestic goods over the metals. Uh, there's a whole lot of stuff I'm leaving behind here. But that's that's fine. I mean, it's it's not a lot of wealth. Otherwise, I would put it in orbit. Uh, and this is like the best world they have here. Uh, I'll survey it. Sparse mining. Not amazing. Ah, uh, there's also a frozen world. No ruins there either. Ibnork. It's really okay. So they have diffuse vols. Um, it's not necessary, but if you can find, I'm just going to transfer this out of here. Uh, if you can find uh, a system with ores, food, and volatiles, that's sort of the uh, holy trinity, so to speak. Volatiles allow you to make gas. Uh, so there's nothing there in the Rathon. All right, let's head over to Belicho next. I'm still pretty good on fuel and uh, supplies. While you do uh, sort of long term excursions like this, you got to keep an eye on your food and uh, your supplies and your fuel. You don't want to run out. All right, so there's no point going into that white dwarf because it doesn't really have any planets. There's only one planet there. I'm just going to start to really seriously prioritize. Ah, no, part of, me is, part of me is an explorer. I'll poke around. If it has a planet, I'll poke around. There's some crummy barren world here. And a whole lot of remnants up ahead. There wasn't a warning here, so maybe they're not too plentiful. But there's a supply cache. Equipment cache, brawler, gunship blueprints, and expanded crew deck. That's not bad. Little nebula. No, oh, no, it was dead. Another factor to consider is how many stable locations there are. Stable locations allow you to set up um, certain sort of specialty, like nav beacons or sensor arrays, um, stuff like that which can help benefit your own colonies. They're not necessary, like, that's not what I'm gonna prioritize searching for, but they're, they're a nice addition. Just transversing out of there. So my own ship has a combat readiness of 85, not bad, not bad. I think there's a, where's the other combat readiness? Uh, is it... There's another, uh, skill that adds to combat readiness, I think. Or I know, I just don't know where it is. Command points. Oh, 
Now, I haven't really talked about skills, but they're sort of up to you. I mean, there is no, like... I mean, there's some that are obviously really important, like the Ordnance Points one. 10% additional Ordnance Points is pretty huge. Uh, if you want to move around quickly, the uh, navigation is pretty huge. But, like, it's it's up to... It, it eventually is up to sort of how you like to play. Um, so, there is no... You know, there are very few skills that are, like, musts. And even the ones that I think are pretty amazing, you know, you can you can do without and not suffer too badly. All right, so there's some rocky worlds here. We'll see if they have uh, widespread ruins. That one does not. This does not either. Transverse jumping out. Trying to speed it up for you all. Uh, Alright, let's head over to Arcasa. Because I don't know if I want to live this far from Core. Oh, uh, no. Well, we'll we'll check this one out. I don't want to overlook. Maybe I find uh, Eden. Uh, no, nope. Warden Beacon Medium. With, like, a few, very few planets. Right into a debris field. Uh, barren, barren, frozen. Nah, there's nothing here. I mean, there might be things to find here, but it's not worth dodging the remnant fleets in order to do it. Because we know that those aren't really colonies. Alright, up to Arcasa. Uh, and then taking a look... We have two in the Sheetum Nebula that we haven't gone to, uh, and that's about it. I mean, most, there's a white dwarf there. Most of these worlds, I guess Jow, possibly, but I really, I do personally like to be very close to core. Now, if you want to be thorough, you could obviously, you know, look at all of the worlds and then pick the best, but um, if you're not close to core world, you know, it's going to be really hard to commute. You don't want a long commute to your worlds, especially early on. Early on, your your the worlds that you colonize are going to be harassed by pirates constantly, and uh, if you live very far away, it will suck. All right, there's no there's one planet here, Glith. Oh, there's something on the other side of this star, though. It is a recoverable battle carrier. That is pretty awesome. Um, that's the equivalent of a Paragon, but it is a carrier. And I just recovered it. Uh, but I don't have enough crew to to um, to manage it. As you can see, my combat readiness would drop if I used it, because I, I have understrength crew. So I'm going to mothball it, but that means I can't transverse jump anymore. Because uh, you, your ships that, when you do a transverse jump, it uh, damages your ships a bit, a bit. And a mothballed ship can't be damaged or it will be destroyed. So I have to be careful about where I go. Uh, there's no more transverse jumping out. Um, Alright, let's keep exploring this system. Carefully. Oh, there's remnants here. There's char and siege. Oh, there's all sorts of goodies to be found here. A vigilance frigate. Uh, sure, I'll recover it. Uh, let's rename these things. So this is going to be legion. And it came with one fighter. I'm going to throw some other fighters in there. Uh, and then this is a Vigilance. I 
I spelled that wrong. Vigil Alliance. Uh, let's, what, yeah. All right, well, the Vigilance here adds a teeny bit of cargo capacity, but it's mostly just a missile support ship. Not something I'm likely to keep. No ruins on that world, but there's a whole lot of stuff around the uh, around Char, this toxic world. Some derelict ships, so there's a dram here. Uh, I don't want a three damage dram, but I will take its fuel. Drams are fuel ships by default, and they have a lot. Gemini freighter. Nope, not recoverable. Char doesn't have any... Um, Ooh, another legion. Also not recoverable. That's all right. All right, let's go on, get on out of here. So I think what's going on right now is um, we are getting a whole bunch of legions. Uh, sometimes in the map generation, you'll have like old battlegrounds, and that's I'm ejecting some stuff. Uh, that's pretty much what's going on. There was a low warning beacon, the system up there. Oh, here's another legion. Oh, wow. Woo. All right, so this legion not only is recoverable, it doesn't have damage, which is inc incredible. Uh, very extremely lucky. Uh, I'm going to mothball this one as well. But... I'm going to want to... You know, set this one up. So this one has a bunch of damage, uh, flight deck, da you know, uh, yeah, th this one is all sorts of messed up. This one is, it's all already outfitted too, which is very, inexp you know, I can feel that like as soon as I have the crew to put people in it. That's super lucky. Little sensor burst, not picking up anything. Uh, two barren worlds with no ruins. I'm just going to pop on out of here. Pretty awesome that there was a legion there. Definitely do some exploring, as you can tell. Uh, so there's a low beacon here. But there's a lot of planets. Uh, yeah, it's remnants. Uh, there's a desert world here. Uh, so let's head over to the desert world. Just being careful not to go face first into a remnant fleet unless I'm ready for it. Cherry picking what I'm salvaging. There are widespread runes here. That's awesome. Maybe far. No, no farmland. That's too bad. But in the ruins, we found a bunch of junk. All right. That's fine. What else was here? There's a rocky metallic world and some barons. <laughs> Maybe I find another legion. That would be crazy. What is this? Oh, cargo pods that I uh, threw away. Supply cache. Cool. Has a mudskipper. You know, I have enough mudskippers. And what's this? Maybe a research station? Oh, Dara looks a kite. No, I don't need a kite. Um, a Gemini freighter. Oh, yeah, I'll take the Gemini freighter. Uh, let's rename these things. Gemini freighter is going to add some um, additional storage space. Another legion? No, oh, it was not. I couldn't take it, but I might need another uh, another cargo craft, given how much stuff I'm finding. But I think uh, I think we've mostly exhausted what there is to find in this system. Well, guys, I'm actually just about out of time. Um, 
but I'm pretty soon will be done surveying all of the constellations right around the core worlds, and I'll make a decision about where I want to colonize. Uh, very happy about the ships I found in this episode. Next episode, I suspect there will be some actual colonization, I hope. Uh, if you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, drop me a line. If you're a patron of mine and would like uh, a captain or a ship named after you, just reach out to me on Discord. If you would like that but you are yet to be a patron, uh, patreon.com slash rodamont has all the details for you. Thank you all for watching and supporting this series. I'll catch you all later. Adios.